Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Silent Bear. I'm going to start off with a song here. This is a song written by my dearly departed friend, uh, Jubal Thompson. It's called The Circle. circle is something that not everyone knows. It goes round within you wherever you go. Whether you believe it and even if you don't, the circle will carry you home. The circle is a cycle that goes on like a dream. As soon as we awake, we're headed for sleep. And everyone gets the best seat in their house. The circle goes on within and without. All kinds of people who live in this dream They're all trying to find out what they could be And I don't understand why they try so hard They're all in this dream wherever they are All of us happy and all of us free when we live for each other, it helps us to see There are so many choices of what to believe So let's believe in this dream together All of us happy and all of us free when we live for each other it helps us to see there are so many choices of what to believe so let's believe in this dream forever so let's believe in this dream forever Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Silent Bear. We appreciate you. And welcome to the winter solstice. And thank you for your presence being with us tonight. 
we so appreciate it. And we know that the winter solstice is the 21st of December, but we're celebrating it tonight in incredible style. This is a special evening because it is a special benefit for the Lakota Healing Way Center, and I'll tell you more about that later. But right now, I want to just um, speak about the solstice. And I want to quote a religious science minister, a friend of mine, um, Reverend Scott Avery. The rebirth of the sun at winter solstice signifies renewal for the earth. As she embarks on another cycle of life, and because we are the children of the earth, we can take part in the sacred cycle, feeling the renewal of our life, the renewal of our life. So the fire is lit here tonight, symbolizing we're moving towards the darkest day of the year. And it has always been celebrated in such incredible ways for thousands of years all over the planet. Different cultures have their ways of lighting the light and recognizing that they're moving towards the light out of darkness. And so we have chosen this solstice to be able to honor our own roots and our own country and bring in our Native Americans tonight to celebrate the solstice. So I want to just begin by honoring the four directions. And I step forward into the West and I recognize that the West represents the sacredness of the circle, indeed, the sacredness of water. Water being the first medicine, water in and through all of life, our life, our bodies. And so I raise this element of water, giving thanks. And from that place of the great north, that place of substance and form, I give thanks that my native friends and family have always honored the great buffalo for its strength and its wisdom and its statue. And I give thanks for the great white eagle that flies from the north. And to that place of the great east, the place of the fire, the place of new beginnings, the place of the sun that shines every morning, I give thanks. And I give thanks for our freedom as individuals. And I give thanks for the freedom, the golden eagle from the west, the white eagle, and the bald eagle of the east. And to that place of the great and powerful south, the place of the fullness of the sun, the place where the white crane flies high in the heavens, and that place of consciousness, Tonight, we dedicate this to the consciousness of all humanity. May we all understand and move to that cycle of light now and forevermore, giving thanks for our rootedness of earth, giving thanks for the sky. And right now, I bring to you our blessed Jennifer Burnett and Randy Chavez singing, Coming Out of the Dark. Done. 
starting again is part of the plan and I'll be so much stronger holding your hand step by step we'll make it through I know I can man I make it easier but I have felt you near all the way coming out of the dark I finally see the light now and it's shining on me Ooh. coming out of the dark I know the love that saved me you're sharing with me And it's shining on me Coming out of the dark I know the love that saved me You're sharing with me Sharing with me Sharing with me Sharing it now I can't be in the dark Make it into the light, yeah Your love shining on me Shining on me Shining on me Coming out of the dark I see the light I see the light Shining, shining on me Coming out of the So thank you, Jennifer, and thank you, Randy. And right now, I would like to offer a special invocation for this evening and just give thanks for the power of vision that has brought the Lakota Healing Way Center into manifestation. So in this very moment, I recognize that great mystery. We call it God. That love, that intelligence, the creator itself, that is in and through all of life, all creatures, the plants, the sky, the winds, the rains. It's in every heart. And so as we have come forth here tonight, coming out of the dark, to celebrate that life that has always been, I give thanks. I give thanks for this opportunity to come together and to recognize something that is so primal within each one of us. So feel your rootedness tonight. Feel your connection. And know that we trust and we trust each other with great respect. So in gratitude, for I know it is found in the memory of the heart, I just let go, let go, allow and permit. And so it is. Amen. Good evening, everybody. It's good to be here with all of you to come and support a vision that has become reality. And in this vision, all of you 
are a part of this vision. Do you think you're here for, because you decided to come here? No, you're here because you're all a part of this vision. So this first style of dance, we're gonna bring out two young ladies. And the first lady, she's, her name is Halo, Hela Brown. She's 10 years old in the fourth grade. And her style of dance is called the Jingle Dress style of dance. Come out here, come on out here, right here. And, uh, and this style of dance comes from the Ojibwe people. And our next style of dancer is our teen girl's fancy shawl. Her name is Morgan Anzuris. Come on out here, Morgan. <clears throat> so as we see Hela with her beautiful dress of uh, jingle dress, this comes from the Ojibwe people of Minnesota and Canada. And this style of dance and this dress was, was, came, came to the people through a dream. Because one time an elder, had, his granddaughter was sick and he prayed for some medicine or uh, something to come and help her. And then that prayer and that spirit prayer and that dream came. And this is the style of dress they presented to him. To put this on this young lady and to have her stand up and dance in it. And with that, she became healthy. And she brought that kind of medicine to the people. So in this style of dance, when she dances, she's praying for all of you. She's dancing for you. She's dancing for people, for all life. And the next style of dance is Morgan. The fancy shawl dance represents the butterfly, the rejuvenation of life. And as she grows into a young woman, she, this is what she represents. She goes through this transformation throughout her, her teen years into her adult years. But we guide her and we give her purpose and we help her and teach her how to be the use in this world as a young lady. And that, in this way of dance, she represents the universe. And she flies around in the beauty of her dance called the butterfly. So with that, we go to this, these two young ladies to dance for you. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you to the young ladies for coming on, blessing us with their style of dance. And this next style of dance is called the warrior's dance, the men's traditional dance. And with that, we're gonna bring out Nick Ohitika Noji. He's a men's style of dance. He's gonna come out here 
And this style of dance represents the warrior's style of dance. And so Nick is going to represent that today. Nick's also, also a combat veteran, and he's here to dance for the people. You know, in this style of dance, he's going to tell his story. His story on battle, his story in life, his story with his family, his love for the, his people, his love for this way of life, his love for all people. You know, in this way, we tell our stories because in, this, in, the, in the drum is the heartbeat of Mother Earth. So in that way, it helps him to dance, to reminisce, to bring out that warrior and to help him to bless the people in a good way with this style of dance. And I'd like to thank Nick for coming out here, for his service, for what he's done for this country and for our people. And it takes a lot of strength and peace to come back into this world and to be human again, to try to be human again. So we go back into our traditional ways and to we heal ourselves. And we adore ourselves again with our feathers and our attire, our clothes, our warrior clothes. And we put them on and we decorate ourselves because we never know if that time is going to be to go home. So we dress the best all the time for every day for that, that time if it comes. But until, until then, we have a duty on this earth to do for all life and to be a warrior from here on out for all life until he goes home to the spirit world. Because that was his oath he made to the creator and to all of these, all the people in this country. And once you make that oath, you never put it down. You can never put it down. You're always a warrior. And so in this way, he takes care of the people and represents his community in a good way, his family. So again, I'd like to say thank you to Nick. Ohiti Kanaji, stand with courage. <clears throat> So I want to say thank you again for all of you being here and to support this way of life that carries me. You know, in 2006, I had this vision. I went on a hill, a vision quest, and sat there for four days and four nights. And on the third day, a dream came to me. The first day that happened, I was sitting up there. And I started to argue and pout and get mad, frustrated. I was arguing with the Creator, doubting and blaming and shaming, making every excuse to try to come down the hill. 
and finish my vision quest. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these butterflies came, thousands of them, little tiny ones are flying all over me. And I watched them, and then they went away. Again, the memory and the doubt and started coming back, the fear, the thirst. And then all of a sudden, these other butterflies came, big ones. They flew around me. And I sat there and watched them. What I didn't realize is that they were there to help me. I was a little boy one time with my grandma and we were walking by the creek. I said, oh, look it, there's a butterfly. And my grandma stepped back. She said, those are one of God's warriors, she said. So it reminded me of that time I was on a hill. And I realized that they were there all that day from sunup to sundown. And they took my mind and my doubt away while watching them. They came to help me. And they were really the warriors of the Creator. And then the second day came. Again, the frustration, doubt, fear came. Anger. I don't need to be up here. Why am I up here? I just want to go down. I'm just going to go down. But I stayed. I stayed up there. It was tough. And the third day came. The thirst was getting even stronger and harder. I wanted to give up so bad. Early that morning, I woke up. I woke up and there was a bird singing, a blue bird. And it was singing this song and this melody and I was listening to it and I acknowledged it. That's a beautiful song. And then I went into the vision. And in the vision, there was an old man in there waiting for me. He said, I was the one who picked you up in a ditch when you were crying. I was the one who came to you in a dream and told you to be here. I was the one who told you that I was going to test you. And now you're here. And it's really good you're here, he said. It's good that you come. He said, but I want to show you something. And the ground rose. And you can see all the people in despair, fighting, at war, angry, all of this. And he pointed at us. He said, look. He said, you people make yourself sick, he said. He said, in order for the people to heal, people must be willing to pick these sacred ways up. People must be willing to walk with courage and love and compassion. People must be willing to see each other as one nation, as my relative, as my neighbor, as my brother, my sister, as my auntie or my uncle. People must be willing because the Creator put many ways on this earth for the people to use, but the people must be willing to pick it up. And he said, when you come down from here, he said, you go home to where you were born and raised. He said, there you will find your answer. So on the fourth day, they came and got me. I was so happy. Ah, oh, the water tastes so good. It was the best cup of water I ever tasted in my life. But when I sat up there, I remembered all the water I wasted, all the water I took advantage of. And before I came down that fourth day, I seen some clouds at a distance, and they were going, they were going north. And I said, hey, relatives, come over here, because I could see the lightning and the thunder, clouds. I said, come over here and bless us with rain. And they turned towards me like this, and they came. They came over, to, came over us. And I, and I said, thank you so much. And they covered the sun. I said, thank you so much, relatives. I said, rain on us. And it started raining. I opened my mouth to catch a drop, but nothing fell in there. It just fell all around me. I was like, ah. It got me even more frustrated. I want to say, well, go away then. Just kidding. 
And then I closed my eyes and just like that I was standing in the clouds. And I was standing and there was water about this deep blue, the most I've never seen that color blue before in this world, in this life. And I kicked the water up and then went up. And every drop that hit me had an emotion of love and gratitude. It was so, such a beautiful feeling. And I said, thank you. And I closed my eyes and I opened them and I was sitting back on a mountain. I said, no, no, I want to come back up there. No, take me back. Because the feeling was just utmost love. And so they came and got me, and we went down. And we had all these people sitting all over, different camps underneath there. With, they're going to go up on their vision quest. But nobody was talking to each other. Camps were all spread out. Nobody was talking with each other. And I was wondering why that was happening. Why, why aren't you talking to each other? And so I asked some of our camp young men to go bring them all together. And I stood in front of them and I talked to them and I gave them thanks and I gave them all gifts of thank you, Wopila, for being there. And just by that action, it, it taught us how to see each other. And so I went home to where I was born and raised on Staten Rock. And there I, I went all over to different places Visiting people that I grew up with that were older, younger. And I'd say, hey, how was your kids doing? And they would always bow their heads. They passed away. They committed suicide. They're in prison. They're in jail. They're on the streets. They're addicted. Or they're sitting with their own kids. Using. So I went home to my brother's. I stayed out there with my brother. He still lives down there. And I, had, I went to his bed and a dream came, and that blue bird came. He said, do you see it? Did you see it? Did you see what your purpose was? Did you see it? And I said, no. And he said, look. And he showed me a place. He said, look. And right away I knew that was the Lakota Way Healing Center. And he showed me. People were sitting around, all people of life were there, praying together, laughing, eating food. The kids were safe, people were healing. Buffalo were walking around, grazing, horses were walking, chickens, everything it looked so beautiful, so peaceful. There were sweat lodges here and there. He said, do you see it now? And I said, yes. And I knew my life was gonna change because I was going a different way. I just returned from war, from combat. Lost my family because of war. But I understood. I changed. I changed. I changed and I respected her decision. But I kept moving. And that's when I went to the vision quest and all this. And I knew my life was going to change. At the time, I was in school to be a structural engineer. And when I came down that hill, everything changed. And so I said, what am I going to do? What's my purpose? And that's what they showed me. So I, I, I was thinking, am I going to be a counselor, psychologist? What am I going to be? What, what is that? So I went to school for that. I went to college and got my education. But then I realized, what's not working with this? with this education I brought. What's not working? Why isn't it working? And I realized that the philosophy that was coming from there was coming from more of a construct thinking. So I realized that I needed to bring some other healing, some other philosophy. And it was right in front of me. It was the buffaloes that I saw in the dreams that were our philosophers. It was the horses. It was the sweat lodge. It was the fire. It was the trees. It was the birds. It was people from different parts of the world coming in their attire. And the places I've been throughout this world, I, I prayed with many people. I sat with them. I humbled myself and prayed in their way. 
And they were all dressed in their own entire attire, different places I went to. Some were from Mongolia, from Russia, Tibetans, from Bangkok, Thailand, Russia, uh, um, different ethnicities from Africa. And they had their different attire on, I realized. This is the way Mother Earth dressed them. Because that's where they're from, from that region. And it dressed, Mother Earth dressed them from that. And gave them their rituals and their language and their way of life. And I realized that it was all a spiritual movement. And we're all circling. We're in a sacred movement in this circle of life. And we're moving. And our destination is to the main source, to the light. And I realized that our, our time, our, our connectedness, our similarities, we're all the same, but different way, different language, different culture, different rituals. And they all come from Mother Earth. And this is where I learned that we need to think indigenous. Because all of you, all of us, are indigenous to this earth. So we must, become, we must go back to the thinking of our mother earth. Listen to your mother. Listen to what she says to the grandmas, to the grandpas, to the wisdom they bring. Because we're all here for a reason. You didn't just say, oh, I'm going to go to that solstice program. No. You're all here because you're chosen. You're part of this mission. You're a part of this journey of life. You're here when you help. You're helping so many people. You're helping veterans. You're helping people who want to kill themselves. You're helping people who are addicted and get up, live life again. That's what all of you are doing. With just your heart and just your smiles, just your kindness and your generosity, you're helping the people. See, and that's why we're all a part of each other's puzzle, every one of us. We came through a pandemic and we're still going through it. We lost lives, went home, devastated us. Seven of my relatives, my grandpa who raised me went home. He was one of uh, the last Korean War veterans back home. And he never told me about those times. Always kept it quiet. So tonight, I, don't rem I want to remember all of those people who made their journey home. I want you to remember those people that you know that made their journey home. We had a man that was a come. His name was Kelvin Standing Bear Sr. He was going to sing, perform for us. And his son died of COVID. So he wasn't able to come. So we're going to remember him and his family as well. Let's be intelligent and take care of each other. Let's be respectful and help each other. Let's be kind so we can be useful in this world. So we, when we be useful, we're making a change. And that change helps our children to leave our Mother Earth for them. So they can experience that, what we are experiencing. Because our ancestors did that for us. So let's do that for them. Let's leave a good world for them. Let's work together and be one nation, be human beings, because we're all light. There's no color in the spirit realm. It's all light. And you all have a purpose. And this is a song that the bird sang up there. And I sang this song numerous of times here. I've been here since 2008, coming. And my high has blessed us, looked after this organization in the beginning. And through them and your support, you made this vision realize, and now it is physical. 
Because of your contributions and your kind and lovingness and generosity, we were able to do that. So now the place, now the people can come and have a place to heal and rest and let them know we love them. Somebody cares. Somebody's doing it. And that's all of us. Every, everything that you do in life, everything, is all a teaching, even our mistakes. We're not meant to be perfect. Things are hard in life because they're meant to help you evolve and grow. Your atrocities, your traumas, your depressions. I always tell people, hold on to the buffalo because he's going to take you through the storm and come out on the other side. Don't run from the storm. Go with the buffalo. And he's going to teach you how to, be, how to heal. Because those things that we've been through are teachers. And that's what I use as my philosophy. I use my grandpa Sitting Bull's philosophy, his teachings. Our chiefs, our warriors, their philosophy. These stones, these rocks, these, the fire. And it has no lie to it. It will teach you how to chop wood. It will teach you how to work hard. It will teach you when you get frustrated to keep going again. And by the time you master it, you realize you're healing. You realize that you love yourself again. So it teaches you how to go out and make a good living, a good life. That's the, that's the philosophy of the fire. It's a teacher. It's the old man. So with that, the song, I'm quoting the spirit world that has come. And I always think, man, that song came from the spirit world. And I'm sharing it in this reality life. <clears throat> so.
This style of dance that I dance is also called Fancy War Dancer. This style of dance is, comes from the Ponca people of uh, Oklahoma. So I want to say thank you to them as I borrow this dance from that people and honor him in a good way. When I was a little boy, my two grandpas, great grandpas, one was blind and his brother, Felix and Noah has horns. Felix kills pretty enemy and Noah has horns. And the has horns comes from the buffalo. Felix kills pretty enemy. Got his name from combat. And one was blind, Felix was blind, and he would sit at night and tell me stories. And he would point at the stars and you say, he would say, see, those are our relatives up there. He said, all those planets, they protect Mother Earth. And they talk to her. They talk to Mother Earth. And I was sitting in class one time and I was listening to my astrology teacher and he was saying, when you're driving in the middle of nowhere, turn your radio on to AM and you can hear the static. Sometimes that's all you hear. He said, that's the other planets talking to Mother Earth. He said, the static, and it took me flashback to my grandpa. And he would sing, the blind man would sing, and my other grandpa would dance. And we had turkeys and chickens, so they made me these bustles. They fixed me up and they painted my face, and they taught me how to dance. We would go out on a prairie and watch the prairie chickens dance. We'd watch the horses prancing. We watched the deer and the, the antelope run. He said, borrow their moves. He said, borrow their moves. Ask them first. You need to respect them too. So with that, the fancy style war dance. Let's hear it for Doug Goodfeather. Thank you, my friend. Ooh. So tonight, I mentioned that it is a benefit for the Lakota Healing Way Center. And we're not going to be passing the baskets tonight, but we have in the lobby containers where you could put your gift. And tonight, Everything that we give is given to the Lakota Healing Way Center. 
And also, I want to just say a few things about the Lakota Way Healing Center. It's a vision that has lived through Doug and now many others. He's a man of incredible love, and we all are. And when we recognize that love, things manifest. So I give thanks for the manifestations that have come to the center. And I know that in the day of tomorrow, more things will be coming. Now, Doug probably wouldn't tell you this, that years ago, and probably even today, he'd walk the 16th Street Mall, and he would find young kids in dumpsters wanting to end their lives. And he would bring them to his center. Also, <laughs> I think just in this past year, being a veteran that he is, um, he has been doing so much good work for the veterans to the point that um, Washington, D.C. and the Veterans Administration wanted to know what this guy was doing because they're all being healed. And so they sent a representative from Washington to talk to Doug. Wow. And so she was quite impressed, and he told you what he did. He brought them back to their spirit. Yeah. So whether it's a young child or an elder, when the center was first formed, Doug wanted it to be healing in the Lakota way, and it's for anyone. Anyone can come to the center. So I just wanted to mention that to our family here at Mile High Church. We're one big community here. And um, I think they're going to put this up on the screen in just a minute, where you can send your gift. Um, we can text it to 45888. There we go. And uh, you can just include Mile High Church Solstice after you're texting. Mile High Church Solstice. And all that money will go to the center. So I thank you so, so much. And um, it's been a center here in Denver. Now there's some land in the mountains where people eventually will be able to come and plant the, the earth, relearn what the herbs are all about. And so it's just going to be incredible. And um, I just give thanks from the depth of my heart and soul. And so Doug has traveled the world to dance, but he's traveled the world talking about this center. So uh, with that, I'm going to um, kind of turn it over to my buddy, Jennifer Burnett. And uh, thank you for your gifts. I am listening to the music of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Oh, what a song. God is singing. I will listen all day long. I will listen. All day long Oh yeah, hey, yeah Oh yeah, hey, yeah Oh yeah, hey, yeah Hallelujah Oh yeah, hey, yeah Oh yeah, hey, yeah Oh yeah, hey, yeah God is being raise the spirit all day long raise the spirit all day long oh yeah hey yeah oh yeah hey yeah 
so much Jennifer and Randy Chavez what a gift to have them part of our church and I'm going to ask all the participants to come out on the stage and as they are I just want to remind us all of our incredible candlelight services that we are going to have on the 23rd 24th the time is 1 4 and 7 and if you've ever experienced the candlelight they are incredible so the solstice kind of begins this week of moving towards the light. So be at one of those candlelight services. And also Mile High uh, Back to Bases is going to be starting. So if you want to learn more about this incredible philosophy that is so inclusive, you might want to uh, consider that. So right now I just want to thank uh, Silent Bear. And I want to uh, thank Nick. Nick. Nick, right. And Morgan. Yeah, Morgan right here, and I want to thank Holly. I'm going to say Holly. And I want to thank my dear, dear friend, Doug Goodfeather. Yeah. yeah. So we're all one family now. You get it? We're all just one family. So right now, Jennifer and Randy's going to lead us in a beautiful song. And um, you can be with uh, Doug and the rest of the team family here in the lobby afterwards. And I want to mention Doug's book, Bestseller, to the point where um, the big publishers are working at republishing and cranking some more books. But it's available on Amazon. And um, Barnes and Noble, I think, too. Yeah, and it's Think Indigenous, and it's a book for each one of us. It's incredible. So he only has a few out there in the lobby, but he'd probably be willing to speak with you. So Jennifer, Randy, take us home. 
What a beautiful night. Thank you all so much. And you can sing along with me, please. I am a light, I am a light, I am a light in this world. I am a light, I am a light, I am a light in this world. And I shine, and I shine, and I shine so bright. And I shine, and I shine, and I shine so bright. This time you are. You are a light, you are a light, you are a light in this world. You are a light, you are a light, you are a light in this world. Tell your neighbor, and you shine, and you shine, and you shine so bright. And you shine, and you shine, and you shine. So we are, and stand and let's sing together. We are a we are a light, we are a light in this world. We are a light, we are a light, we are a light in this world. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine so and we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. And we shine, and we shine, and we shine so bright. Thank you everyone for coming and have a safe evening and a merry, merry Christmas.